the conventional narrative about Al is he's a developer who is the father of the Pearl District and is a visionary, but that only tells part of the story. If I had like one word, uh, modest. Quiet. Smart. He's kind. Al has a big heart. He's very generous. Severely understated. A little awkward in a charming way. Al's not much of um, a talker. I don't know, I love Al. <laughs> I think everybody loves Al. <laughs> you see him come and you kind of light up. I always say, hi Al, and then I try to jump on him. <laughs> I think Al Solheim's legacy will be that he has created a neighborhood in Portland that did not exist at all. Well, some people call me the grandfather of the furl. <laughs> but I you know it's great and I, I accept it. I saw it. I didn't see what it's all become, but I saw the nexus of the Pearl District and the creativity and the kind of people it would attract. He saw the foundation stones of a great neighborhood. But in a wider sense, he you know, set the stage for how you approach to crafting a neighborhood. Nothing changes neighborhoods like artists and street trees. And that was really true in the Pearl District. In a way, you could say that while Al has had this huge impact on the built environment, he's also had a huge impact on what I'll call the soul of our city, which is what art and culture means to Portland. He invested a lot in art and artists. He didn't push against us, but he allowed us to be rebellious, understanding that the art community was really gonna help develop the neighborhood. It was really necessary for me to understand that there is someone out there that could help out. What he did for me at that stage as an artist uh, reflects on what I'm doing today as well. Well, I was first drawn to PNC by Sally Lawrence. She was a hero of mine. She was a president for 24 years, kept the school together, and transitioned at the Pearl District. She was a profound person in my relationship to PNCA. I see arts education as a continuum. I guess each president has been sort of the right person at the time for the needs of the school. The future success of PNCA really does rely on important contributions from leaders in our community. You know, I have to say gratuitously, I think PNCA's is greatest contribution is involvement here. To some extent, my relationship with PNCA has helped shape my identity and who I am. It sort of became in, a little bit in my DNA. I just like being part of something that I think can be so impactful. His philanthropy, which he has quietly distributed throughout our community, is also shaping the city in interesting ways. When I saw his name on the library, I thought well-deserved could see Al being like a metaphor for like a entrance to like a world that otherwise I wouldn't be able to explore. Nonprofit board members serve an incredibly important function, really in the role of community trustees. You have to be committed to the vision. You have to be able to take risk and you have to hold in your hand stewardship of the organization. Al certainly did all of that. To have somebody like Al with the kind of continuity that a commitment of 20 years provides, it's pretty extraordinary. It's community leaders like Al who, through example, can demonstrate the importance of time and money and the impact it can have on an institution. Well, I think serving on boards is obviously important for the institution, but I think importantly, it's also what it can do for the individual. It's a, it's a gift to have the opportunity to do that. To everybody who's watching this video, not just board members, it's a great time to be part of PNCA, and I firmly believe it. You know, I'm sure Al has agreed to do this uh, video tribute, kicking and screaming to the altar. Uh, and I'm sure it's the last thing he, he would have thought of. But I think it's high time after 20 years that we recognize the cumulative impact of Al Solheim on our community and we all collectively say thank you.